you high. Alrighty, folks, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for your late night AEW Dynamite review. This might be uploaded as a late night date uh, or early morning or whatever instead. Um, why am I doing the review later than I wanted to is because I was busy, so that's what happened. But, um, anyways, guys, so this show is pretty boring. I, I don't know what to tell you, you know. So much for this. I, I, it's funny that even some fans thought this show was pretty boring. Um, what the fuck was this? You know, if apparently last week's show. But the thing is, people are saying like the show sucked. Like, did you, did you guys not notice that? Like, how is this show any different than what happened last week when it was a compete against Tuesday Night at NXT? Like, this show was pretty much as indie as possible, and it was like, if anything, more lesser stars. Like at least la last week's show, you had Edge wrestled and whatever, but whatever. So they're back on Wednesday nights, and if this is apparently like what's gonna happen when Tony Khan just freaking having a Twitter meltdown, I don't know what to tell you. I, I don't. I just thought the show it just fucking lame. It's fucking lame, bro. Um, so many jobber shit that happened. Only one big thing that happened on the show, and we'll talk about it. it was basically the main focal point. Or I'll, I should say really two things that happened that we I want to talk about. Anyway, so yeah. The show started with Switchblade Jay White defeating Pentagon in a match with no story, and no one fucking cares. Like, why did this match have to happen? I don't know. It just lists Jay White talking about how it just at least J. White basically talking about how, you know, oh, you know, MJF can't find anybody. You know, he can't find anybody uh, to defeat uh, Big Guns J. White to win back the bang, big bang, bang, uh, to be with him or whatever. It's like, what the fuck? Why does that matter? Like, why can't MJF, I don't know, try to actually put some effort to take the title, the title back? Or, I don't know. Again, this is very predictable. This is. I don't understand why people are looking forward to this feud. To me, this doesn't feel like a world title feud at all. But Smarks thinks a world title feud for some dumb reason. Backstage, we see MJF. Um, he's interviewed. And basically, he gets interrupted by the acclaimed, uh, or, or especially Max, Max Caster. They're trying to establish that Max Caster is it's buddy buddy with MJF, even though we barely even know that. They're just doing it because some stupid shit on Twitter, and they want to get them together. I don't fucking know. Max allow uh, once again asked uh, uh, MGF if it allowed him to team up with the, against the Bang Bang Gang. Max says one once they win, they can scissor, and Andre turns on the request again. So Max uh, comes up with a different plan that he's gonna win a battle royal tonight, and then he's gonna beat Max uh, MJF next week to the ring, and then MJ will be forced to put the ring on it. And MJ walks off and calls Max Max a stalker. And Billy Gunn says, That guy's uh, that guy's such a scumbag. And then Max Castro says, Yeah, but he's my scumbag. It's basically this hard it it's like wow. Imagine like if the if like this was a girl, right? Like and people would complain at how this is so fucking creepy and shit like that. But like seriously. It's like, wow, multiple, it is, it's so fucking weird. And it's like, how is this fucking cool or funny? I don't know what to tell you, nor do I care. Second match, Kyle Shida defeats Emma Sakura. Like, didn't this match happen? Like, who the fuck cares? In an Eliminator match, and it's like, fucking, fuck this, okay? Seriously. Then we get Edge interview backstage. Basically, this is literally the same old, pro and I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but they're basically doing the same shit with Edge right now. Edge literally debuted in AEW. And they're proceeding to do the same fucking shit. That he, he basically doing the same shit right now. Where he's interviewed backstage. And so the fans couldn't see him do his beautiful entrance. He says that. You know, I uh, he basically talked about you know I I came to AEW to be with my buddy Christian Cage and possibly come to AEW to end my career with my friend. But the possibility is could, could become more real that Christian started uh, become more colder about it. How he doesn't want to fight uh, and I, I, and he said, oh I don't want to fight I don't want to fight Christian and take a CNT title. But I will be there when Luchasaurus and Nick Wayne leave him. Basically mentioning the same shit he already said. It basically was the same shit, unfortunately. 
Was it bad? No, but apparently what was the problem during this is that... And I don't know what the fuck is wrong with AEW. AEW lately been having production issues. How is it happening in literally already four years of this company... And now they're still having fucking issues. You've been around for like four fucking years. And now you're having like, if anything, worse production issues than ever. Like, what is wrong with this company? Like, the production is fucking terrible. I don't know. Christian, yeah, Ed Edgement says that he came to AW to end his career with Christian Cage. He says that he's been confused since, like, he known Christian since they were kids. And they've always been best friends. Copeland said that he always believed in Christian, and Christian had always been jealous of him and his success, and he's been carrying him through his entire career. He says he never wanted to be it be like this, and didn't want to take the spotlight or TNT Championship away from Christian and won't fight him. He says that when Luke Stores and Nick Wayne leave him high and dry, he'll be there to pick up the pieces. So basically, it's kind of like him trying to simp for his own friend or something. I don't know. I'm not saying he's a bad... Pro Again, Edge is one of the best promo cutters in history. He is fucking great. But, like, this was basically the same shit. What was different from this? They're kind of dragging out this a little bit. This is so much for this long-term booking. I'm not saying I hate this, but, like, wow. It's basically the same fucking thing. It's really just the same fucking thing. I don't know. I don't fucking know. Warlow... Defeated Nick Dolph Ziggler's brother in seconds, which is Brian Nemeth, and apparently he's a heel, whatever. Tony and Shivani then were like, Whirlo, where, what's wrong? What's up in your mind? And then he basically points the words of his wristband saying MGF, and then he bumps to Shivani on his way out, so he's basically like a bad guy now, and so he's targeting MGF or whatever. Sadly, the problem with this is that Warlow has been misused. Why should I really care about him to him challenging MJF for the title? I mean, in a perfect world, Wardlow should be the Batista of from MJF, right? Who should be like the Triple H in this situation where they could have basically should have built the idea of Wardlow dethroning MJF. That could have been something. You could have basically done a similar Batista Triple H storyline with that. Now. They kind of missed their, dropped their ball with that. Like, we're, again, MJ's a baby face now. And Warlow, they fucked him up. Why should I care? Just saying. Kane made his backstage. He said that his win loss record has been great this year, but he's measuring, he's a measuring stick of AEW. Like, whatever. Kane says, I'm going to get back to winning ways starting tonight and who knows I may even go back to after the, the AEW World Championship then MJF shows up and said you know I always looked up to you Kenny Omega okay so much for this fucking AEW anti-smart huh you know but uh but you better come uh, and he pulls up closest 13 days 13 days when I will become the longest reigning AEW champion in history and then Kenny says we'll see about that Aren't they already... I mean, to be fair, if you think about it, this should be... This is more so, honestly. This is more a world title feel match for the pay-per-view. I'm not saying that Kenny Omega is by all means a fucking main eventer like John Cena or Stone Cold, The Rock, or Triple H, Shawn Michaels, you know, whatever. He's not... He's only a main eventer to these smarty fans. But, in terms of... In terms of all of this, where Kenny Omega is the per, one of the perceived right, like big stars of AEW, you would think the world title match essentially should maybe be MGF versus Kenny Omega for the world title. Even though it means babyface versus babyface, but at least that feels like more a world title match that should happen at the pay-per-view, right? We're, we're, we're literally getting Jay White versus fucking MJF, which just does not look and feel like a world title match at all to me. Because Jay White is literally not even exciting. He just sees this fake facade of, again, this uh, overhyped indie smarky wrestler that smarks praise that he's good. Like, give me a fucking break. And I'm not acting like, oh, I'm some big Kenny Omega fan. I'm not this big Kenny Omega fan at all. But you would think... Again, when you're looking at AEW, he's perceived as one of the big stars, right? Literally, that guy should be main eventing against MJF, if anything. It makes more sense for that. You know what I mean? 
whatever. We get another video with Adam Cole still trying to help Straw making this time making food. These are clearly shot the same day because everybody's wearing the same exact outfit the first video a couple weeks ago. Cole finally gets upset when Strong is mad at him that he didn't cut the crust and leave off his peanut butter and jelly sandwich and leaves. Strong tells the rest of the group he might have to, have to do something, but it doesn't. Uh, but he doesn't want to leave. He might have something to have to be nice for that scumbag MGF. He says. Um. Yeah, this was not really that funny. This was definitely their. Like they're, I mean, I wasn't really caring about this shit, but honestly, this was one of their least funny vignettes, you know, with the whole Adam Cole, MGF funny segments. This is definitely the, the least funny thing I have ever seen, honestly. This was terrible. Power Hobbs tells his origin story. February 22, 1998, he was supposed to be the greatest day of his life when he met, this, met his hero, Chris Jericho. The grandmother... Uh, who raised him, his big mama, got him fun road tickets to meet him. And what did he, what did he do? Chris, Chris walked past that old lady, told her to shut up, look at me, and told her to sit my ass down. So basically that's his original origin story, that why he hates Jericho or whatever. Whatever. Okay. Sadly that you basically make me not care really much about Power's Hobbs, so whatever. Kyle Fletcher that loses to Kenny Omega. I don't know. Kyle Fletcher just comes off as some fucking generic wrestler. Like that Will Osprey fucker. But he has some fake indie cred. I don't know who the fuck Kyle Fletcher is. This guy has this stupid fucking haircut that everyone ha else has had. Aside from the fucking stupid broccoli heads. And Kenny, they just proceed to have a fucking indie match. Which I don't fucking care about. Kenny won and whatever. And apparently, fucking during the match, Don Cow's like he's useless or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, this match was useless. That that man is useless. I don't fucking care. Like, why old days they showcase useless fucking wrestlers on AEW who are not stars and don't draw, have no character and charisma. Speaking of useless, Lance Archer squashes some guy. Yeah, Lance Archer. Let's, this guy shows up randomly. I swear to God, this guy shows up randomly so many fucking times in AEW. They're, and then all of a sudden, they're pushing him again for some reason. Again, you can't just bring this guy back for no reason. And he just fucking... Sh like, well, how many days a year he's only in AEW? Who fucking cares? Like... This guy is literally fucking... Bef like, most generic fucking big tough wrestler I've ever fucking seen. He's literally the Braun Strowman before Braun Strowman was cool. I remember when it was Vance Archer, when in that sci-fi ECW, and one of the most generic fucking wrestlers I've ever seen. I remember he was literally one of the most generic wrestlers I've ever remembered in my life. Years later, you can't get more generic than ever. But we gotta be 10, he's fucking tough because getting he's went to New Japan or whatever. I don't fucking care. Fuck this guy. Then we had Sting. And Tony Tony said, I had a progress off for all these years. They're going to make you say, Sting! Sting talks about, he reflects on his career. He's talking about, you know, uh, years ago, uh, uh, I'm here tonight to mention, so basically he was playing off the fucking retirement world because that's basically what the big thing was going on. So it was, it was right speculated that he was going to announce his retirement and basically that's what he kind of did. He mentions how Throughout his career, he was able to be with people like Lex Luger, you know, team up with all these people, even like the Ultimate Warrior. He also mentioned how, how he had some classic feuds, or you know, he was able to work with people, guys like Dusty Rhodes, Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, and the Smarks, they booed Hulk Hogan. And I, I, that's why we wanted to talk about this in this video. So these fucking Smarks, Hulk Hogan was mentioned, and all these Smarks booed. And these are the real wrestling fans. These are these very loyal fucking real wrestling fans. They had the audacity to boot Hulk Hogan. These are not wrestling fans, folks. These are fucking fat, neck-bearded mongoloids who know nothing about wrestling that probably watched wrestling since WrestleMania 29. Like all the gay shit. They think the attitude is overrated as all hell. They think all these fucking big, tough wrestlers are fucking... 
toxic masculinity, whatever. They like all these gayest looking wrestlers like Adam Cole and Jay White or whatever. They think these guys are star, but they'll fucking hate on Hulk Hogan. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Why boo Hulk Hogan? Do y'all really still think that he's like some racist motherfucker? Is that why? Like, is that why? I bet you, there, there were, these people were in Texas. I swear to God, this was in Texas. I swear to God, there's like more motherfuckers in Texas that are more racist than Oak, and said worse things than Hulk Hogan has said in his fucking life. Because he said one fucking word and he was angry at that and apparently makes him a racist. And that's why he, sold, he has to be ridiculed as like the most terrible man in history. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, yeah, but the thing is, it's not just that, too. They're fucking hating on him because, you know, he he, he doesn't work for him, brother. Because he has, again, he has this bad indie cred. He has this fucking bad cred with these smarts because, get it, you know, he didn't put people over or, you know, he's a backstage policy motherfucker. So who cares? Motherfuckers. If Hulk Hogan, like or not, did not do what he did for the business, what he did not do, he would not, he, you have to understand. That wrestling would not be where it is today if it wasn't for Hulk Hogan. And maybe the backstage politics actually helped. All you motherfuckers that like to fucking crap on him losing to Yokozuna. And I know all you motherfuckers like to pretend to care for Yokozuna. But again, y'all probably only pretend to care about him because he's ja he was fake Japanese. Because all you motherfuckers like to jerk off to these Japanese wrestlers for some reason. Because it's kawaii or whatever the fuck it is. But seriously... Y'all, for real, will not care about Samoan wrestlers. You will not care for Yokozuna or whatever. Y'all just fucking trying to make shit to fucking hate people. Like or not, WrestleMania 9 was a memorable moment. You make It's a fake fucking moment that people like to hate on. If you think about it, Hulk Hogan fucking winning the title was kind of cool. It was. Hulk Hogan built this fucking business. He was the fucking star that made wrestling pop culture. And, again, there's no reason to hate Hulk Hogan. The guy, there's still kids today that look up to the motherfucker. There's a fucking six-year-old I remember on YouTube, I think, like, last year, fucking doing Hulk Hogan impressions. And he went to meet Hulk Hogan. How is it a kid can do that and understand a fucking star like Hulk Hogan, but all these motherfucking, these weirdos, will fucking cheer for Adam Cole like he's the greatest of all time? Why, why? What's the hate for Hulk Hogan? Because he didn't do all these indie moves? Because, guess what? He didn't need to. Back when wrestling was, they didn't need to fucking do all these stupid bullshit. They didn't do all these dumb fucking moves and they kick out of two every fucking time. At least with Hulk Hogan, when he kicked out of two, it looked believable. He was a star. He didn't do all these stupid shit. He did in Japan. I don't understand why you guys don't like him still. I don't fucking get it. If anything, all you, he has more indie cred than all your fucking indie likes. He was the first IWGP champion. So I thought y'all would like him. What, is it because he's fucking American? I don't fucking get it. I swear, these smarks are fucking, they have no respect for legit legends. And they fucking, like, they, they fucking, it's not just their dumb, it's not because they're dumb opinion. It's because they're fucking retarded. They think they know wrestling, but they fucking don't. These are the worst fans in the world. They are smarks. They should not be what people, the fucking people like AEW should be catering to or anything in wrestling. They should be ignored. Because they're going to watch anyways. I swear to God, y'all fucking smarts suck, man. Fuck y'all. Sting even said that he learned from Hulk Hogan, so I don't know what the fuck y'all fucking crapping about. And he said that Hulk Hogan transcended women's wrestling and learned something from the guy. Even him, he said it. But that's when the smarts, like, they basically, like, didn't say anything. They refused that. But for some reason, because of when he said that, the fucking crowd got a little cold when he was when he was talking. It was like, what, you're going to turn on Sting now? Whatever. Sting says when he was forced to retire in 2015, it didn't feel right, but it's time for him to, to get out of his way. He did announce that in his first, that his first match was Revolution 2021, which technically wasn't even his first match. It was basically a cinematic match, I remember at the time, but it wasn't even that good, you know? Like, if, if anything, his first real match was what, that fucking Double or Nothing show? But anyways, he said his, you know, Revolution 2021 was his first match, now his last match will be at Revolution 2024 and his career went in AEW. So he's officially retiring. Uh, now and that's for good and he says that nothing's for sure until this and it'll be the end of showtime it'll, it'll be showtime and it'll be last time for him 
I like Sting. Sting is one of my favorites. If you want to know something that I basically became a big Sting fan because of TNA. Obviously, WCW, I was born very late into the Monday Night Wars. I was born in 1999. But, you know, I, I did watch back on WCW and stuff like that. But on with YouTube, more of my... That was around that time when basically WCW was already coupling. So, like, basically my family was already caring for WWE, but they watched WCW as well. And I wouldn't know anything about wrestling if it wasn't for them, obviously. But Sting is actually one of my favorites, um, especially from TNA. He was one of my, and definitely watching back with, with WCW, he's fucking great. The fucking Crow Sting is fucking cool. I love Joker Sting, too. <laughs> I love Sting in TNA. Sting is one of my favorites, uh, definitely because of TNA. And, you know, God for, it, it, there's a reason why people care about TNA, because of guys like him, Kurt Angle, Main Event Mafia, you know, you name it. It's a sucks, it sucks that he's going to retire, but at least he came back. But, like, people are acting like, you know, the thing about AEW, they treat their re legendary respect. So, apparently, not making your wrestlers world champions, like the legends world champions, that's respect. Like, okay, I, I don't, I mean, it, they could have made him worse, but if anything, like, what would be the problem of giving him the world title? Sting was basically there every week bodyguarding Darby Allen and shit. Like, why couldn't he be, honestly, with the, the condition in Sting is, that Sting is, why not made him, make him the world champion? Why not? You honestly, again, AEW would benefit so much if they started having their, their legendary wrestlers become champions. If memory serves him right, when Jericho was champion, the ratings were honestly not too bad. Even though they were fucking still low, right? They originally were not too bad. And even though, yes, they were getting under. They were fucking falling apart because they because Smarks... Not Smarks, fucking... Yeah, I mean, Smarks were fucking just overrating this shit and normal people were watching and they stopped they gave up because uh, other gay shit I guaranteed you if your show was to be filled with legends like let's say if Collision was filled I mean or fuck make no one's gonna whatever Dynamite Collision if you made one of the shows like a legend show like with Sting Edge Jericho Christian you name it former WWE guys people would watch that more than it currently is I'm just saying it will. People watch that show more. And if you made those ch people world champions, the show would be better than just having a guy like fucking Hangman Page. And uh, uh, they would actually honestly draw more than MGF, in my honest opinion. But, you know, MGF is not bad. He's just a, he's just a well star. For, he's a star for these smarts, right? He thinks that they think he's such a great heel or whatever. Even doesn't mean face now. Sting in his condition, like why not make him the world champion? Why not have him defend? Why not him challenging MGF for the world title instead of Adam Cole Gay Gay? If you again, AEW all in, they're supposed to WrestleMania now. It's officially their WrestleManias. Why couldn't those shows like? All in, all out. Why couldn't Sting be on a show? Instead, instead of fucking, you know, the first match when Punk came back, instead challenged Darby Allen and Sting was on the back seat. It should have been Sting versus CM Punk. Let's be for real here. Okay, it would have been a more bigger match. Sting versus MGF would have been a bigger match for All In. Okay. A lot of these matches could have been bigger. Uh, like why why couldn't we see Sting be world champion? Why is that a problem? He's such a good condition, great star. He's willing to do crazy. He mentioned that he's willing to do crazy shit still, and the age he is, and it's fuck it. Who cares? Why is it a problem? Like why couldn't you give him the title? Why I'm surprised they didn't give him and Darby the tag titles. You couldn't have done, done that. Like tag titles. It would have been great to see him at least win the title. Honestly, that would be great. Have him retire fucking against MGF for the world title. I would love that. I don't know. Something. I don't know why it's a problem for not having him challenge for the world title. Have, uh, it would be great. It would make people care a bit more. I just think they could have used... Again, I'm not saying they treat him terrible, but for people that are saying that, oh, AEW treat their legends great. Aside from with Sting, like, well, how do they treat their legs great? You think apparently what they do with 
Paul White, like, or, you know, Mark Henry, just them treating the like, news reports that they'll, show, they'll showcase some legends, like, just coming on and appear. That's treating the legends better? I don't know. Or, or they're treating R R RVD better. Like, what, him losing the fucking hook? Or not hook, fucking stupid Jungle Boy? <laughs> Come on, like, making these top stars look like jokes to these people? Give me a break. Whatever. I, I mean, regardless, again, Sting, in my opinion, if you want ratings to be big, Sting should have fucking been fucking wrestling and fucking became the world champion. It would have been fucking great. That's my opinion. Had maybe in this last night. Again, they probably announced this, this retirement tour because they make they want to make people get, try to watch since he's going to, you know, they're not really making people care about the show. It would make people care about the show, so I guess that would be something. So yeah, that's that's basically what happened. It's the retirement tour for Sting. So I like Sting. God bless him, but you know, it's okay. Tony Storm backstage, we see her saying, "Don't call yourself a centipede or a, a centipile if you haven't watched the classic silent film Gone with the Storm." And then, I don't know, some stupid, I don't know, something about, like, they did this thing where she basically had a silent film where, wow, like, commercial, like, that's the thing, like, the side-by-side -side commercial thing, which, whatever, I don't know, I don't care. Then we see Nick Wayne interview with his mother. This is one of the worst uh, fucking uh, actings I have ever seen. Okay, this is one of the worst acting I have seen in my. Uh, I understand it's hard to say that, you know, for a non-actor to try to act, but this does not sound natural. Jr. was like, you know, and Nick Wayne's like, you know, you you you're not a real mother, or, you know, uh, you didn't treat me right, or yeah, you know, like I don't like you or something, and you know, Darby used me or something, and then fucking Nick Wayne's like, and that's Nick Wayne's mom's like. Son, he treated you like a son of brother, and like it was like bad acting. Honestly, it did not sound organic. It just fucking Nick Wayne came off as a like he couldn't act. I understand this guy he's young, but come on, you have kids who are like so well acted. Okay, L look at Danielle Harris in Halloween, such a better actress when she was like six or f seven. And Nick Wayne is 18, 19. Come on, you talk about fucking child actors who had fucking great acting skills. That are way better actors than Nick Wayne. I understand that these are not actors. That's basically why a lot of wrestlers become like wrestlers. Because they can't act for shit, by the way. But seriously, wrestling is supposed to be inclusive acting, okay? They have the typical, you know, Dar Darby to... Like, you know, Darby used me. Uh, you know, I, I, you're, 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 you're dead to me. And then, like, she begs him to stop and then uh, not leave with Christian. And then, uh, Nick, uh, Nick, I don't know, basically Nick Wayne's like, I have a real father now. I have a, da I have a dad at home. And it's uh, Christian Cage. It sounded pretty gay, by the way. It sounded like, you know, he's my new dad now. It sounded like a fucking gay fucking porn shit. It was like, what the fuck? It sounded like some gay shit, like, I don't know, like, get it, he's just gay, gay daddy, it sounded weird, but obviously it's supposed to mean that, you know, like, yeah, you're, you're, you're my son now, like, basically he's gonna take it, which, it's okay, you know, it's the gimmick where Christian's a better father figure for anybody else, right? But then, Nick Wayne's mom, it's like, you know, huh? couldn't act for shit, it's like, no, don't leave with him, and then, like, she slaps him, like, you're dead to me, or whatever. It was bad acting. It's a darn shame because I will not. I'm not gonna lie. No wonder fucking Christian Cage wants to be with that woman. Cause my God, I'm, I and I understand. Nick Wayne's mom. If you didn't have that baggage, you are invited to my big black couch. <laughs> okay, it's for real. But yeah, Nick Wayne's whatever. Well, anyways, but Christian then Christian Cage before leaving says you should have picked up my number. So yeah, that that's what happened. So you know, uh, and then like, but then after that we hear like noise and like she's like so terrible act like oh oh my son even though it looks so fucking weird and stupid but but what happened darby allen then attacked nick wayne 
and Christian and Luchasor Luchasaurus. But the Darby was getting attacked. Eventually, the number of games got to him. But then um, Sting came out again and attacked both of them or saved Darby. So the big thing about this match was uh, Nick Wayne's tooth broke during this segment. So there you go. Um, the main event. That was uh, That was really, really bad acting. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Maybe this is also a clue to what's going to happen for fucking revolution for or whatever is upcoming for Sting's retirement tour. They also then announced after that that Battle for the Belt. They announced all these dumb matches that no one's going to fucking care for. They're having Mystico appearing on Rampage. Again, like, who the fuck's going to care? Yeah, Mystico, who is fucking Sin Cara. Or whatever, I think. Or the original Sin Cara. I don't fucking know. I don't know. S s boring, shitty matches for announced. They announced the next... Dynamite legit looks more better than this, by the way. Uh, Dynamite next week. Tony Khan has a gift for Sting. Hook and RBD will team up again. And MJ versus the winner of the casino. Not casino. The fucking Dynamite. Dynamite. Ba Diamond ring or whatever. We had all these stupid matches for Collision and Rampage. That no one's going to fucking care. They announced that fucking... Ra like, yeah, Battle of the Belts. And then... Gorge Cat's gonna defend his title against some jobbers that no one fucking cares. And Chris Daniels gonna def defend against a best friend. Like, who fucking cares about that fat whale bitch? This show looks fucking garbage. Like, these shows look like garbage. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. But yeah, the main event. So the big thing about this show was also the casino... Not casino. The Dynamite uh, Diamond Ring Battle Royal. Again... To me, this really doesn't make much sense to really keep doing this. Where, again, the winner of the Battle Royal has to face MJF, who's the defending Diamond Ring Champion. Because, I, I don't know. I, I, again, you would think that this Diamond, Diamond, Dynamite Diamond Ring thing, it should be like a stepping stone. Whoever wins it, it could be like the King of the Ring or whatever. Which it should be, right? Maybe like a King of the Ring type of thing. And then the winner, they'll get future title shot, whatever, right? Obviously, the original idea was like MJF, uh, he won. You know, he won it originally. He became the diamond, diamond, my diamond ring champ, whatever. He used the ring for like, unless that's the thing. Well, what's going to happen if he loses? Like, if he loses the fucking diamond ring. Like, if he loses the match. He can no longer do that. Can he just have his own ring? Like, wouldn't, shouldn't that be his gimmick? <coughs> Like, I don't know. I didn't think this is all kind of dumb and stupid. Like, they keep doing this. But not just that. What's stupid also is, like, this whole shit is kind of really dumb, predictable shit. Like, what's going to happen when MJ leaves AEW? Are they going to keep continuing this stupid shit where... I don't know. So, this thing where, like, MGF, he's defending the Diamond Ring. And the Battle Royal was literally full with fucking jobbers. The, the only thing I remember about this match is they had Jeff Hardy, who danced, to mock the fucking Daniel Garcia guy, and he gets eliminated. I swear to God, what are they doing with the Hardys? They're fucking treating them like jokes, and they're only good enough for Rampage. Are you fucking kidding me? There was no stars in this match. I thought the idea was that they were going to have, like, Kenny and Megan in this match. They were going to have the main eventers. They were even mentioning that they were going to have Pentagon. Okay, I don't remember. No, do I care? They had all I know is that this match was probably one of the lamest job battle royals I've ever fucking seen. Is but the jobbers, I don't care. The last two was Mass Caster and fucking... What's his stupid name? Juice Robinson. It kind of already, you already knew who the fuck was going to win, apparently. Because, get it, he's affiliated fucking with Jay White. He's a heel. And, because, I guess they're going to try to take advantage of what happened with the whole controversy recently. With the whole, you know, uh, Nichols thing. They're going to try to make this, that little story with that. Where MJ's going to fucking fight against him or whatever. Not do I care, really. But it's like, I don't care for Juice Robinson. The guy's a fucking joke. Not a star. And he literally won the main event. If this was the main event. Really? Are you fucking kidding me? This was the main event. This is our main event. And that's going to be our match for next week. That's our big main event show next week. That's our big show next week. MJ versus Juice Robinson. Who won a gay, boring battle royal for a predictable match that you know MJ is going to win. I don't fucking know. 
And for some of you mass casters, so in love with MJF, like, how does that make any sense? I thought, like, fucking the other guy is gay. Mass caster's gay, too? Like, what? I don't fucking know. All I know is this show is really fucking boring. A lot of job of shit happened. A lot of shit makes no sense. Not intriguing. This show sucked. The only big thing about this show was the Sting announcing of his retirement and the fans booing Hulk Hogan. Edge had a backstage promo basically saying the same shit. Already now, he doesn't really feel that big as he could be. Thank you, AEW. You fucking ruined Edge. I'm not saying they full on ruined him, but it's like, wow. How am I really excited? I don't know. I just think... Huh. <sighs> So people say that this show sucked compared to last week. I don't know the difference. Like the difference is last week, at least they the show opened. I mean, it made event with Edge. This show had it just. It was kind of no different. They had these boring gay indie jobber matches that smarts are praise, and it had Sting. Like what's what what's the difference, right? Whatever. Anyways, I thought this show sucked, man. I, I hated this show. I don't want to see. I don't, I don't know what to say. This whole diamond, dynamite, diamond ring shit is retarded in my honest opinion. Um, I guess the yeah, sure, that's a big story for the match, you know, with the whole quarters or whatever. Oh yeah, during the battle royal, MJF got attacked by Jay White. He eventually got back the title, but then Jay White basically low blowed him and took the title back. It's like he's so fucking dumb. I don't know. I don't know. Like he's gonna just take the title. Well, I don't know. And Mass Cash got distracted because his but his gay butt buddy or something. I don't fucking know. Overall, that was dynamite. Very boring show. Fuck Smarts for booing Hulk Hogan. And thank you, Sting, obviously, but like well you people say good they treat the legends better, like they don't even showcase their legends at all. Like is that is that why you praise it? You guys don't really care for the legends, you guys like these boring indie smarks? And you know damn well if these smarts were in the ring with the legends, like they'll expose them how like they're terrible and, st and like guys like Sting are proven to be better. Just saying. All right, that's all I'm saying, people. Just keep it real. Till next time, peace. Yeah, bye. I'm just keep it real. Get your games going. Let me sleep. Bye. I miss bitch. Go. Oh shit. Oh shit. I couldn't drink my cold bag sleep because I had just self-use of supplements. But I hope you understand. Till next time, peace. Yeah, bye. The show is pretty boring.